Hello everyone. So we're going to go over the chapter of magnetism. Now for this section, I want to make an introduction video, which is this one. And then I'm going to go over the lecture worksheets, uh, complete all the questions and the relative um, theory that goes behind each question. Okay, so this will be a quick introduction or as quick as I can make it on uh, going on some overall um, principles and characteristics of magnetism, okay? So if we focus on applications, then magnetism is actually one of the most important fields in physics because its direct and indirect applications are so vast. Okay, we can see magnets or applications of magnetisms in MRIs, meters, motors, speakers, uh, cyclotrons, just to name a few. So if you just simply Google uh, magnetism or applications, you will see a list that goes on and on and on. Now, I want us to focus on these two points here on the screen. For a second because the lecture worksheets will have questions that are um, diverged from these two points. Now the first point says that magnetic fields will affect moving charges. Okay, So if you have a moving charge then if you have a magnetic field the presence of that magnetic field will exert a force on that moving charge. Additionally, moving charges will produce magnetic fields. So in this case, once you have a moving charge, that moving charge will create its own magnetic field. Okay, so these are two processes that will occur and these are two characteristics that we will focus on the lecture worksheet. The second point says that magnetic fields, okay, so you can think of them as poles right now, will exert an attractive or repulsive force on each other. And this is very similar to when we thought about the electric forces on charged particles. So what do we mean? When we started this course, we had a simplified view of charged particles. You can think of charged particles, you know, we, I had these positive signs and negative signs in these circles. And I said, okay, let's assume that these are positive and negative charges. Now, depending on the arrangements that you have, so you can have like charges or opposite charges, then these charges will have an attractive or repulsive force between them. Now the idea is that the magnetic poles will have a similar attractive or repulsive force depending on what pole you have. Okay, so if you can have uh, similar or same poles or opposite poles. Uh, positive and negative electric charges can exert can exist in isolation of each other. This is a point that when I drew my charges, for example, this positive charge or the negative charge next to it, we were able to express and describe that charge in isolation and make its existence possible. But there are two questions that we can have in mind as we go through this chapter, which is, okay, but what about the North and South Pole? which are the poles, the magnetic poles that we're talking about. And an additional question that you can have, and it's also on your textbook, is, well, what happens when you cut a magnet in half? Okay, If you cut a magnet in half, do I have two smaller magnets, each with a north and south pole, or is one side of the magnet uh, uh, north, for example, and the other side remains a south. Okay, so here I have a magnet. I have this magnet where I drew 
on the left side a north pole and then the right side a south pole. Now we did this in lab and in lab we had a few characteristics that we had to uh, comply such that we could draw this magnetic field lines properly. So the first one was that field lines will go from north to south. Okay, let me do as smooth as I can. Oh, this does not, do not show, okay. So they go from north to south, so away from north towards south. Okay. Another characteristic is that these field lines never cross and that they're smooth. So away from north and then towards south. They don't cross and assume that's smooth. And then we saw in the lab that there's also field lines that are representing the top and bottom side of this bar. Okay. Please assume that this looks a lot more symmetric. Looking at it, it looks a little off, but you have the, the point. So the question is, well, I am going to cut this bar magnet in two. What will happen when I cut this bar magnet in half? Okay, and as we slightly cover this in lab, you will have two bar magnets, smaller bar magnets, where you have a north and south pole on the same equivalent side as you had before. So on the left-hand side, we have the north pole, and on the right-hand side, we have the south pole because that was the arrangement we had previously. And the rules are the same. We have field lines, that are going away from north and they go towards south. Okay, I can probably draw a full field line away from north towards south. Okay, and if I take this thought process further and I caught the north and south bar magnets again in half, then what I have is again, smaller bar magnets with the same according size, north and south, left side and right side, okay? So I'm gonna quickly just draw a few lines that are leaving the north, leaving, entering the south, okay? Leaving north, entering south, okay? And so on, okay, now, if I keep cutting this bar magnets further and further, then there should be a point where you have for using a lack, you know, a loosely word uh, object that will have only one pole. And that is what we call a monopole. And monopole actually does exist in nature, which is an object with one pole, a north or a south, and it's a very attractive experimental um, physics field that there's a lot of research that goes into this, okay? All right, so now let's get two keywords that we use to characterize these magnets that we will start studying in this chapter. Now, when we talk about magnets, we will normally talk about in, for our case, two types of magnets, which we call the soft or the hard magnetic material. So for the soft magnetic material, these are materials that are actually easily magnetized, but also tend to lose their magnetization um, easier. So a common example of this can be iron. And on the same trend of thought, we have hard magnetic materials, and these are materials that are actually more difficult to magnetize, but also retain their magnetism or magnetization much more. And a few examples can be, um, let's see, cobalt is an example, or nickel can be another example, okay? So when we talk about soft magnetic materials, they're easier to magnetize, but also easier to lose their magnetization. And hard magnetic materials are more difficult to magnetize, but at the same time, they will retain 
the dramatization more. All right, so let's talk really quickly about how we see which side of a bar of a bar magnet can be a north and a south. So I'm gonna draw a few few lines here. I'll try and draw these a little better. All right. Okay. These are a little better, except that let's assume that they don't go inside the magnet. Okay, so here I have a north and a south. So on this drawing, if I am to draw a compass, we did a lab where we saw that a compass needle will point towards the south pole, the magnetic south pole. And this is because the needle will follow these field lines that leave the north and go towards the south pole. If I compare this direction of field lines with the Earth's magnetic field lines, we will see that the geographic North Pole on Earth is actually the magnetic South Pole because the field lines are going towards the geographic North Pole. And likewise, the geographic south pole is actually the magnetic north pole because that's where the field lines are leaving the magnetic north pole is will be leaving in the southern uh, south pole. Okay. And a last piece of information before we start getting into the uh, problems of this worksheet is that if we want to find exactly where is the true North Pole, the true geographic North Pole, which actually is a South Pole, well, we're going to look at something called the dip angle. The dip angle is simply saying that if I have a surface, I'm going to have a field line that is perpendicular to this surface, which makes an angle of 90 degrees. And so this dip angle is what we call the true north, or it can be also the true south, and it's in the Hudson Bay in Canada. And the direction of these field uh, lines on Earth actually reverses every few million years. So as of right now, I just went over a few properties that I would expect you to know. Uh, if you read the first couple pages from the textbook, then you will have a bit of extra information. But I just want to pinpoint some key parts such that we are all in the same boat and then we can apply these concepts on the lecture worksheets. Okay, so I'm going to start a new video where I go into how to calculate the magnetic field and how to use the right hand rule when you have a moving charge, the applied force, and the magnetic field lines.